good morning a very warm welcome to all of you and happy dipavali and extended celebrations as extended celebrations continue in many parts of the country on behalf of sis jnu india rights network and center for global india insights i welcome all of you to this panel discussion entitled g20 delhi summit uh, inclusive growth and rise of global south it is enormously energizing to see so many uh, friends mentors and well wishers in this hall uh, ambassador kanwal sibal chancellor jnu jnu vice chancellor santishri pandit is expected to join shortly uh, shri amitabh kant india g20 sherpa and the keynote speaker for today's discussion uh, south africa's high commissioner to india his excellency mr joel uh, sibusiso debele uh, his excellency alem uh Walter Mariam Eritrea's ambassador to India uh who is likely to join us later in the meantime is represented by his deputy uh Tesfal Det Gebrelesi uh his excellency mr Alejandro Simancas Marin Cuba's ambassador uh to India and professor Srikanth Kondapalli dean SIS JNU ladies and gentlemen dear students and friends Uh, it's my great pleasure and honor to co-host this important conference with the School of International Studies, JNU, a venerable institution of proven pedigree and eminence. Over the years, uh, SIS has mapped new frontiers in research and analysis of international relations. The list of illustrious people who have traversed this hallowed institution is too long to recount here. Amitabh Kant, our guest of honor for today's conference. is a distinguished alumnus of JNU and before coming he went on a nostalgia trip around the place and uh, so is external affairs uh, minister S Jay Shankar and so many more my profuse thanks to chancellor Kanwal Sibal uh, vice uh, chancellor Pandit and my esteemed friend and co-organizer professor Srikanth Kondapalli for giving us this opportunity to co-organize this discussion at SIS Uh, friends this panel discussion today is sort of perfectly timed as it's taking place just 3 days ahead of the second edition of the voice of south summit a virtual summit where the leaders and representatives of the global south are expected to speak and the virtual follow up g20 summit india will be hosting on november 21 followed by the formal assumption of the g20 presidency by brazil on december 1 uh from the point of view uh uh of our discussion today uh one of the overarching outcomes of the of the delhi summit was the rise of the global south inside the majestic bharat mandapam on the morning of on a beautiful morning of september 9 with the statue of the dancing shiva bearing sacred witness as it were history was made in new delhi as the leaders of the world's richest nation decided to admit the 55 nation african union into their fold <coughs> as prime minister narendra modi invited au chair comorian president azali asumani to occupy his seat at the g20 high table there was loud applause inside not only bharat mandapam but also across capitals in african countries and the developing world prime minister modi hugging an emotional president of comoros will remain a defining image of the new delhi summit the new delhi declaration may well prove to be the defining document of the primacy of the global south in the international agenda and mainstreaming of issues of the global south henceforth the concerns and interest of the global south will constitute the core agenda of g20 which will be reflected in the succeeding presidencies of brazil and south africa We have the High Commissioner of South Africa here, who will amplify on how Pretoria plans to keep the torch of global South burning. Brazil's ambassador was looking forward to our event, but in a last-minute development, he got stuck with a very important visit. But in a conversation some time back with me, he made it clear that Brazil's G20 presidency will carry forward the key priorities of India's G20 presidencies, such as food security, the global South, and green development. Uh, ladies and gentlemen dear friends it's time for the global south to claim its place under the sun in other words india's time and that of the global south has come and it's a cause for celebration 
but also deep purposeful thinking on how to advance the interest of the global south in multilateral groupings such as G20. Going forward as India passes the G20 baton to Brazil, I urge speakers to reflect on what will constitute India's enduring G20 legacy. Opinions may differ on it, but if one were to take a long view, mass participation in G20 meetings across India can be considered a signature achievement, bringing an elite forum whose debates, debates revolve around complex issues closer to ordinary people require imagination and a leap of faith. The transformation of G20 into People's Festival underlines the need to make multilateral diplomacy people-centric. Looking ahead, India G20 presidency will be remembered for making the G20 a catalytic agent for people's empowerment and paving the way for a human-centric world order, in the words of Prime Minister Modi. There is much to say, but I'll stop here. Uh, uh, only thing I want to underscore in terms of the themes of this conference, there are two parts. One is the inclusive growth, that how India G20 presidency has uh, put inclusive growth on the forefront of the global agenda. And the second part is the global south. And in this context, I would urge speakers to also take a critical look at all this uh, you know, hype and euphoria around Global South. First of all, semantically, what is Global South here? Because some of the countries, in fact, most of the countries of the so-called Global South, uh, geographically speaking, are above the equator. So the Global South itself, the concept, and whether we need that term, or whether we had earlier terms like third world and develop, and now the new uh, buzzwords like emerging powers and global economy. So uh, I urge all speakers uh, to take a critical look, a forward looking look at the key outcomes of the summit. We are extremely uh, fortunate in having the man who drove India G20 presidency, who is easily the superstar of the G20 process in India. If G20 were a film, he would be indeed the hero, and he is the hero of the moment. Uh, we'll come to him later. Right now, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Chancellor of JNU, Ambassador Kanwal Sibyl, uh, and urge him to make his <coughs> remarks. Ambassador Sibyl needs no introduction before this uh, distinguished audience, but nonetheless, let me try to sum up his very illustrious and variegated career. He's a uh, of course, he's been recently appointed as the Chancellor of JNU. Uh, he is a former Foreign Secretary of India and now a well-known commentator on foreign policy issues. Ambassador Sibyl joined the Indian Foreign Service in July 1966 and served as India's ambassador to Turkey, Egypt, France and Russia. In 2017, he was conferred the Padma Shri Award by the President of India. Uh, Sibyl graduated from the world, also graduated from the world, information distributed university with the scientific degree of international doctor of philosophy. He's the first grand doctor of philosophy in India. There are many more uh, honors to his name. Uh, it will take up a lot of time, so I must stop there. But to this audience, also want to introduce another side of Mr. Sibyl. Uh, he's also a poet who's written a a, a collection of very finely crafted poems called Snowflakes in Time, sir. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Ambassador Sibyl, uh, I will urge you to speak on, uh, you know, how do you look at uh, India G20 presidency, how it has accelerated the rise of India, and uh, this whole idea of how India can advance the interest of the South and interweave it in this global rise. Over to you, Ambassador Sibyl. Uh, 